afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. When it comes to personal finance, many of us struggle with the basics. Things like budgeting, saving, and investing are skills that we have to learn. And those skills are just part of being financially literate. Today we're going to talk to an expert about money matters and learn how you can increase your financial literacy. Joining me is John Dwyer. John is president and CEO of the New England Federal Credit Union based in Williston. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks, Judy. What exactly is financial literacy? You know, I think financial liter literacy simply means that you're keeping track of your money, uh, keeping track of the financial flows and the resources you have for your, yourself or your household. Uh, it's beyond just keeping track of your checking account. Uh, you know, you do need to balance your checkbook every month. Mm -hmm. uh, many people need to remember that. Uh, it's also keeping track of uh, and being prepared for surprises that come up. Uh, and in this day and age, there are many more tools to use for that. Uh, there's online financial management tools. Uh, many financial institutions present your uh, monthly statement in a electronic format. So it's become easier uh, to keep track of your finances. Mm -hmm. And so what are the benefits of financial literacy? Uh, you know, there, there are many. Yeah. Uh, most importantly, uh, you know, it is you're more comfortable when you know that you have the resources for those rainy day issues. Uh, there are also many more factors that go into um, what you pay for things. Uh, so financial literacy can mean that you're better prepared when you go buy a car. You know, what are the structures, what's, what are the rules around buying a car, what are the benefits around buying a car directly, uh, what are the benefits around getting financing. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, uh, with credit scores and the use of credit scores becoming more prevalent in our society, uh, we use them, obviously, when we make an auto loan. Uh, we use them for mortgages. Uh, when you're financially literate and you manage your credit score, that typically will result in the higher credit score. Mm -hmm. And the higher your credit score, the lower interest rate you'll pay on most things that you borrow for. Uh, What's the best way to get a higher credit score? Uh, make because, your payments. Yeah. Uh, you know, really, that's, that's really the biggest factor. Um, there are other factors. Obviously, making payments and being on time is the first. Means you're uh, responsible. Means you're responsible. Means you've met your obligations. So to the to the entity that's thinking about lending you money or providing you a, a, even a rental for an apartment, uh, they have the confidence that you're going to pay them back. So that higher credit score helps them evaluate that. Um, other factors are don't have a lot of credit card debt and don't have a lot of credit card uh, lines. So uh, credit card or pardon me, credit scores um, are influenced by not only the overall amount of debt you have. But what is your access to debt? So, for example, if you have a $3,000 credit card line availability, um, you don't want to have a $2,900 balance. Right. That's going to lower your score. A $1,000 balance on a $3,000 line will structurally have a better score. Mm -hmm. So those are some ways to influence uh, the credit score. And so with that credit score, if you go, as you mentioned, for a loan, you may be paying less money because you have a better credit right, score. Absolutely. The rate you're going to pay on a car, uh, the rate you're going to pay on even a mortgage now, um, fees you're going to pay at closing on a mortgage uh, are going to be lower with a higher credit score. Uh, because again, the, the risk on those loans is going to be lower. Mm -hmm. um, so that credit score has a much bigger influence uh, than it did even five or ten years ago. So can you talk a little bit about the big picture? What does financial literacy look like on the national level? Uh, sure. I, you know, financial literacy has been getting a lot more press over the last few years. Um, in fact, recently in a uh, May 2016 Atlantic, Mo Atlantic Monthly article, I gave some you know, statistics that we hear about regularly in, in my business. But it says that about 50% of consumers cannot raise $2,000 in 30 days if they had an issue. 49% uh, of consumers can't cover a $400 emergency without selling something or borrowing money. 37% uh, of consumers have a higher level of credit card debt than they have in savings, uh, which really means that they are living paycheck to paycheck in many cases. Um, a 2014 bank rate survey uh, said that only 38% of Americans could cover a $1,000 medical bill or a $500 auto bill. Um, with money they've saved, so without, again, having to borrow. Mm -hmm. um, and two uh, Pew Charitable Trust reports found that 55% of households uh, don't have enough liquid savings to be able to, if you will, get through a month without income. Um, so that really demonstrates that nationally, uh, we, the uh, 
we in this country uh, face limited resources to get through challenges that we may come across uh, financially. We haven't saved enough to be ready for those. And what about here at the state level? Uh, in, in, uh, in, in the case of Vermont, we really mirror the national uh, averages or the national information. Uh, Champlain College uh, did a financial literacy action plan in 2014. In that plan and in that evaluation, uh, they found that uh, financial literacy topics are not really uh, taught in the schools, that you know, we're not brought up through the school system with financial literacy education. Only seven Vermont high schools have adopted a personal financial graduation requirement where people have, or young adults need to know about managing money. Uh, many high school students make decisions about not only where to go to school, but what to uh, focus on in their studies without really thinking about what the income they will earn in those studies after. Um, and that's and certainly- And whether they'd be able to pay their college loans Pay their loans college back. loans, yeah. pay the, uh, you know, what their lifestyle would be like based upon what they're uh, gonna earn. Uh, that survey also talked about 50% of Vermont workers, only, or pardon me, less than 50% of Vermont workers um, are participating in their retirement plans at their companies, um, a very important factor for financial literacy. Um, and only 36% of Vermont adults had a rainy day fund uh, that could last them three months uh, if they were not working or had some medical issue. 60% um, of Vermont adults tell, uh, told people in the survey uh, that they struggle with finances, uh, that they find uh, they're meeting their financial obligations stressful. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of technology now help people, can help people uh, manage cash flows, manage, you know, prepare for retirement, uh, prepare for a rainy day. Uh, and those tools uh, need to be used uh, effectively, uh, and they also need to be used safely in the context of you know, online safety. Mm -hmm. So how do we turn this around? How can people gain access to financial literacy and uh, education? Well, there, there are a lot of organizations that are interested in helping consumers uh, become more financially literate, whether you talk about the state of Vermont, who has a website, uh, at the, it's actually part of the Vermont Treasurer's website. You can reach that at uh, www.vermonttreasurer.com. Dot gov. Uh, they have financial literacy resources available. Um, New England Financial or New England Federal Credit Union uh, and other financial institutions are also focused on providing resources. We have many resources on our, our on our website. Uh, we have webinars, we have podcasts, um, and we also have um, other types of education where we do in-person education. So all of us in the financial services community are interested in helping people so that they could reach out to their bank or credit union. Mm -hmm. Is there one thing that people can do to start down the path? Is there one, one big thing that folks can do to start turning this around? Sure, uh, keep track of your spending. Um, you know, really the, the most important factor for all of us is you know we we all tend to know how much money we are bringing in so to speak to the household uh, but keeping track of the use of your debit card uh, keeping track of how the checks you're writing each month uh, again there are many tools to use even a simple spreadsheet uh, at the end of the month to take an hour sit down uh, and keep track of it um, and then get some financial education uh, you know go to a seminar an hour two hours um, and start using those resources that help, can help you plan. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of results do financial literacy and education programs have? Uh, you know, I think most importantly, they tend to have uh, the, the result of helping people improve their credit scores and helping people plan for their future. Um, you know, people will be more comfortable going forward if they start really focusing on retirement. Um, you know, we talk often about rainy day funds. Um, you know, we don't necessarily come out of school or start our first job with a rainy day fund. Uh, right. So a lot of what we hear from people who have gone through financial education is that they've learned how to save better. Uh, they've learned how to affect their credit score. It doesn't happen in a month, but it can happen in, over time and even in a year, you can influence your credit score. Um, but they're more aware. They're more aware of their spending. They're more aware of um, focusing on being prepared for events that may arise. Mm -hmm. um, that's the most common example. But if you know, we talk about people living paycheck to paycheck, where, where does that extra money come from? You know, I think the, the, what a lot of the education that we do and a lot of the financial planning that we do uh, with, with our, our members uh, really focuses on, you know, start with $10 a week. Start with, um, you know, the next time you get an increase, a raise. Mm -hmm. uh, take half of that raise and save that. Um, you'd be amazed that you know, within a few years or even in a, within a couple of years, 
you know, that change in behavior. Um, you know, a really common example is don't buy that cup of coffee every day. You know, that's $4 right. a day or $5 a day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those types of behaviors do impact, you know, your ability to build some resources um, and participate in the 401k. Um, you know, that's really from the start. Um, you know, when you start that first job, uh, participate in that because you do need to save for retirement. Because you never believe that you'll grow old. <laughs> that's right. That's what, that's absolutely true. None of us are going to actually uh, retire, right? Uh, exactly. We're not that soon. Um, so, um, is it safe to say that it doesn't really matter how much money you're making? You can learn something through exploring financial literacy, either information or courses? Absolutely. Um, you know, we work with uh, all different uh, members in this context of how much revenue they have or how much income they mm -hmm. have. Uh, you know, people's financial skills uh, aren't something, you know, we don't walk out of school or start our first job with a, a set of financial skills. We need to learn those. Right. Um, and all income levels, all age levels, um, you may, you know, be older. You may be in your 50s like me. Um, and you may feel that you need to continue to learn about financial skills. Um, and there are places to do that uh, because um, you can start saving more. Um, it's, again, not necessarily easy, mm -hmm. uh, but it is something that you can do. Um, you talk about um, credit reports and credit scores and, and how important those are. We see all the time on TV ads for find out your credit score. Um, what do people know about these ads? Uh, what's important about those ads is that in many cases, what they're trying to get you to go to is a website where they want to charge you a fee to monitor your credit. Um, or to give you access to something you can get for free directly from the credit bureaus. Mm -hmm. um, so when you go to either go to the vermonttreasurer.gov site uh, or to other financial institution sites and they'll link you directly to the credit bureaus because you, by law you do have access to your credit bureau every year um, and those credit bureaus will offer will provide that to you without charge and without all of the ads or all of the add-ons uh, that come with some of those sites that people send you to. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are some that are good, uh, but many of them are trying to sell you something else. What do you think is the biggest uh, mistake that people make because they lack financial literacy? Uh, thinking that they can't learn it. <laughs> I, you know, I think that's true for all of us, right? There are a lot of skills that we figure we can't. I wasn't can't, good at math. <laughs> right. I wasn't good at math. I'm not good at, you know, any, some things. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't learn how to do that. Um, and there are just so many resources available, there are so many organizations that are interested in helping you uh, to do that. What do you think is the single most important financial behavior? Uh, again, savings. Uh, that, that willingness and that understanding that it's important to set aside some money, some resources uh, for what will happen. You know, we're all going to face rainy day issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I think saving, because many of us believe, certainly when we're young, I, and even as we get older, it's hard to save. You know, there's always demands on us in mm -hmm. terms of financial. Right, there's know. always something that. <laughs> right, there's always something that we, we need to do or we have, you know, there are real issues with the house or with the car. Um, but having that, that habit, it's just like any other habit, once you start doing it, uh, that's very important. And you're not talking about, you know, stashing money in your mattress. <laughs> no, put it, put it with a financial institution in a savings account. I, you know, a, a lot of, uh, People can really uh, start saving by, you know, when you get paid, automatically put money in a savings account in a checking, and in a checking account. Don't put all your money in the checking account mm -hmm. or share draft for us. Um, that's one of the ways that people really can learn, to, you know, and don't have that savings account accessible on your debit card. Right. So that, you know, it's, it's, on side, it's, you know, it's out of sight, so to speak. Yeah, um, that's not extra money. That's no, it's separate. there for, you know, when you need it for that tire or furnace or something like that. So once again, how can people contact any FCU? I feel free to uh, reach us at our website, mm -hmm. www.nefcu.com. We have a lot of resources available there. Also call us at 800-400-8790. Um, and we have a lot of people who will help uh, give you some information on financial planning. Uh, and also we have two full-time financial planners who help people with these issues. Mm -hmm. And it's never too late. It's never too late. There's always the future that you need to prepare for. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.